Ready? <laughs> Ready. Do you, Edward Minor Lamont, solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Connecticut, so long as you continue a citizen thereof, and that you will faithfully discharge, discharge according to law, the duties of the office of governor to the best of your abilities, so help you God. I do. Chase. Congratulations. It's pretty good the second time around, too. And I, I love the majesty of this board now than ever. To Deanna Grace, thank you for what you did. And Javier is beautiful. Appreciate that. It's inspiring. Um, to the guard, General Ivan, thank you for inviting us into the armory where it happens. Uh, the guard has been extraordinary. When he was talking about this last three years, uh, doing everything from Djibouti to building field hospitals here and making this available to us. The foot guard and the horse guard, thank you. You've been protecting governors ever since we used to commute between uh, New Haven and Hartford, our two capitals, before we could make up our mind. Uh, I think for me right now, the ceremony means even more. Uh, and I look what's going on and Washington over the last couple of years and over the last couple of days. And it just reminds you that um, pay attention to democracy and celebrate when we get it right. And a part of democracy is the um, regular transition of power. And uh, that's what we've been doing here today. And it's the one time I'm really glad that we are the land of steady habits and people can see that we know how to respect that transition. And you got to work at it every day. I mean, Stephanie Thomas, we sure know what a Secretary of State does these days. And, um, you know, what, what you're going to do in terms of um, early voting and making that uh, reality for people. We sell what absentee voting means. I think we uh, think a little bit about a ranked choice voting, which maybe is some way that we can take some of the sting out of politics and uh, bring some of the decency back to uh, public service. And smooth transitions in a functioning democracy is, um, is keeping your commitments as well. And uh, our treasurer, Eric Russell, is doing everything, managing state pensions to make sure we keep our commitments to the uh, amazing state employees and teachers who have toiled every day their lives uh, here for the state of Connecticut and uh, toiled right through COVID and make sure that pension is there for them, Eric. That's a heavy responsibility. Um, Right behind him, Sean Scanlon, um, our controller, you know, following in footsteps, um, doing everything we can. We learned uh, through COVID that we want to make sure the health care is available for everybody. And Sean's going to be taking the lead to make sure it's more affordable and more accessible so nobody goes without coverage. That's a pledge we make for the state of Connecticut and what a difference it will make. I didn't forget you, William. <laughs> I think this last uh, few years reminds you, um, you know, we need the Attorney General. We need the Supremes. We need um, more than ever. You know, uh, things bent, but they didn't break. And I think that uh, says a lot for our country. And, uh, you know, right here, every day, like you have to fight for democracy, you also have to fight for your freedoms. Um, there's those that want to take away our freedom to love who we want to love and marry who we want to marry and have a baby when we want to have a baby. And uh, I can tell you that um, William Tong as our attorney general has been standing up every day and fighting for these are not just Connecticut values. These are American values. And, and I know that um, Dick Blumenthal and Chris Murphy and our amazing federal delegation are going to be doing everything we can at the federal level to make sure these rights are taken care of, just like Chris Dodd used to. Hey, Chris. <laughs> I want to say to um, my friend and um, political partner, Susan Bites, was, um, 
who gives me advice every day, often with this as they're closing, what would this mean to the girls? How would this impact the girls? It just reminds me that if every girl doesn't live up to her full potential, Connecticut doesn't live up to its full potential. America doesn't live up to its full potential. And that's what we do in, in case of the girls and everybody, nobody's left behind. That's what we're reminded of every day. And, and you know, we all have these goals. Um, John Lennon, you know, saying, imagine. But he also said something that I think all governors, and I know Dan Malloy knows this better than everybody, um, life is sometimes what happens to you while you're making other plans. Life is sometimes what happens when you're making other plans. It could be a knee-knocking recession. It could be a horrible shooting tragedy. It could be um, a pandemic. And you know, our job as governors is to um, get through it, think about Connecticut as our family, and work together as one. And also, never take your eye off the North Star. And our North Star for Connecticut and our country is growth and opportunity. It's growth and opportunity. And uh, I think opportunity starts with um, those kids and giving them the very, very best head start in life. That's why education is so key. That's why I'm so glad that our very own Miguel Cordona is back in the room. President Biden um, stole him away from us so he could do for uh, the kids all across the country what he did for the kids here in Connecticut. And we're just getting started. I think you'll be back. So with that, I've got to tell you, I've got a, a pretty busy day coming up. Uh, off to the state of the state, if you want that. Then, um, <laughs> uh, Secretary Buttigieg, uh, they informally known as Mayor Pete, said, um, I'm coming to the Gold Star Bridge. You may want to come. I said, can you do it any other day? I said, it's $160 million. I said, I'm there. <laughs> but more importantly, um, I, I want to thank the people of Connecticut for giving Annie and me this um, opportunity. Um, I cannot do anything without my wife. I can't do anything without my family. I think that keeps you grounded in life, keeps you grounded during what has been some really complicated times. And I think of each and every one of you as my greater family, and I love the opportunity to serve the state I love. Take care, everybody.